this b, this is really, it's not t2, it's t squared minus 2t plus 2. It's so it's exactly the same situation that we had before. The difference now is that I want to find the electric field at a point, a distance small r, equal to r over 2. So here. Again, we have, of course, the magnetic field into the page, a uniform uh, a magnetic field which is which is varies with time this way. And so, to find the electric field, it's exactly the same argument like before. We draw. a path, which is a circle. Again, we argue that the electric field must be tangential, exactly the same arguments we had before. It can't be radial, because there are no charges within this, within, within, there are no charges anywhere. So if you draw any Gaussian surface, there are no charges. And also, the, we know that the integral of E ds around this closed path must be non-zero, because it's minus d phi over dt. And minus, and minus d phi over dt is not equal to zero, because b changes with time. So it also cannot be along the axis of the cylinder, again, because E dot ds will be 0. So E has to be tangential. Since it's tangential, this is just E times 2 pi r, as we have seen before. The only difference now, how does this differ from the previous problem? It differs in that. And that phi now is pi. Now, it's a flux, the flux enclosed within this path, C. The flux enclosed within this path now is the area times the magnetic field. The area is now pi little r squared. Because, of course, there's a field here, but it's not within the path. So the only area enclosed within the path is pi little r squared. Whereas previously, when point P was here, the flux was the area times B, and the area was the whole area here, pi big r squared. Now it's pi little r squared. So time is B. Now, pi r squared, of course, doesn't change with time. It's only B that changes with time. So this is minus pi r squared, the derivative with respect to time of B, which is minus pi r squared. And the derivative with respect to time of B, is, or with respect to T of B, is just 2T minus 2. So this is minus 2 pi r squared into t minus 1. It's equal to 2 pi r, so e is divided by 2 pi r, so you get minus r now into t minus 1. So if you put r in meters and t in seconds, that will give you e in SI units, which is Newton per coulombs or volts per meter. Again, if we're interested in the, so this, this will give us the magnitude of E. If we're interested in the direction of E, again, we have to use Lenz's law and imagine 
that we have a wire loop here and ask ourselves which way will the current be induced. And it's the same arguments as before. We have to look at d phi over dt, which is r into t minus 1. That's the rate of change of flux. If t, if the time is less than one second, then d phi over dt is negative. That is, the flux is decreasing. If the flux is decreasing, then we have to enhance the field. That is, the induced, the induced current must enhance the field. So the current will be clockwise to produce a magnetic field into the page. And so the electric field will be clockwise. If t is larger than 1, then the flux is increasing. If it's increasing, then we have to produce a magnetic field out of the page. And so the current will be counterclockwise to produce a current out of the, to, to produce a field out of the page, which means that the electric field will be counterclockwise. So for t less than 1, E is clockwise. And for t greater than 1, E is counterclockwise. Thank you for watching.